lots of quarterbacks looking for a new home and there's quite a few Alabama players looking for a new home too. Here's some of the notable ones that have officially entered the transfer portal. Left guard, Javion Cohen, wide receiver, Christian Leary, defensive back, Kyrie Jackson, running back, Trey Sanders, and reserve offensive lineman, Damian George. To talk a little bit more about this, let's welcome in our next guest. It's Travis Ryer from Bama Online. Hey, thanks for joining the show. Travis, how's it going in Tuscaloosa so far? Everything's great. Glad to be here. Good. Happy to see you again. Let's start with that list we just showed on the screen. Um, so quite a few notable guys there. Would you classify this as a mini exodus, these guys going out on their own terms, or is this more of a processing? I think every case is different in all likelihood, and I think we can say that for most of the guys that you all have talked about as we approach 1,000 players in the transfer portal. I think Javion Cohen, probably the guy on that list that's going to attract the most attention because he is a two-year starter at the guard position. He also has some background at tackle, so he's projectable at a couple of different positions as a starter at the Power 5 level, and so um, it's interesting because you don't typically see starters at Alabama moving on, but they feel really good about Tyler Booker, a true freshman that saw a lot of action rotated in there with Cohen and Emil Echior this season. The problem for Alabama is Echior's moving on. He accepted an invite to the Senior Bowl earlier on Monday. So they're going to have some questions to answer there on the interior of that offensive line. Again, Booker can help fix a lot of that, uh, but they may have to, to really look to develop one of these younger players. Maybe it's uh, Terrence Ferguson. Maybe it's a player that's at tackle right now or center for that matter that they're cross-training between the guard and center and guard and tackle positions. But, yeah, I'd say Cohen right now sits atop their list of nine guys that are in the portal. And there will be quite a few schools clamoring for him. Offensive linemen come at a premium. All right, it's no secret that Alabama is, has been looking for a proven wide receiver for the last few seasons. They picked up Jamison Williams through the portal in 2020. Last year they took in Jermaine Burton and Tyler Harrell. Those guys didn't really make much of an impact. They're still looking for their star wideout. Do you think they go to the portal again this year? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think tight end is an extension of that. You could also look at, but perhaps. Uh, but absolutely, they hit a home run with Jamison Williams a couple of years ago. Uh, this most recent cycle, uh, they felt good about Jermaine Burton. He played a lot uh, in the 2022 season. He actually really came on down the stretch. So that was encouraging, maybe a little bit late, too late in some instances. Uh, but Tyler Harrell had an injury throughout the season that he never seemed to be able to get on track from. So it'll be interesting because those guys have eligibility remaining. You know, if Burton comes back, if Harrell comes back, maybe that changes their approach uh, where the portal is concerned. But I think if it's a legit number one type of guy, especially with an emphasis on the vertical passing game, they'll have interest there. Um, so they've, they've got some things to figure out in the passing game in general. Let's talk about the quarterback situation, because this is an interesting one. Bryce Young hasn't confirmed he's going to the NFL, although we all saw the curtain call that he gave to Bryant-Denny Stadium after that Iron Bowl win. Below him on the depth chart, it's Jalen Milrow and then the former five-star Ty Simpson, who might be competing for the starting spot. Or is Bama now in the market for a quarterback? It's kind of the X factor in all this. And thinking about how they may approach that, I think it has to be an absolute right person, right player, maybe even to the extent of what a Caleb Williams was the last time around. That doesn't mean they might check in on some guys. I think they're going to vet and do their due diligence on maybe even some of the guys that we've heard about here in the last 12 to, to 20 hours or so that have gone into the portal. But I think they still like their room. You know, Jalen Milrow was up and down in his opportunities this year, uh, came off the bench, did some really good things in that game against Arkansas. And then he gets the start the next week against Texas A&M and has a real issue with turnovers. It wasn't a confidence inspiring sort of performance for Jalen. To be fair, again, the sample size both ways is pretty small where Jalen Milrow is concerned. And I don't think they're at the point yet where they don't believe he can't get the job done if he's needed in 2023. But 
you know, Simpson is a guy with a lot of talent, a lot of ability in his own right. Um, uh, like Milrow, a guy who can extend plays with his legs, kind of like that, and uh, make all the throws you need him to make in that Alabama offense. So I think they've got some capable options right now at the quarterback position, and they may get opportunities as early as the Sugar Bowl coming up. Uh, if it, depending on Bryce's availability for the postseason. And uh, from there, we'll see. I, I, again, they've got a two-quarterback class committed for 2023 right now. So numbers shouldn't be a problem for them, just from that perspective. I think it's got to be the absolute right guy for them to go that route at quarterback. Yeah, that is a really interesting position to watch because they always tend to go the homegrown route when it comes to the signal caller. Um but Alabama, right on the edge of the playoffs this year at number five, what kind of changes are they looking to make on this roster? How aggressive will they be in the transfer portal to get back into the top four next year? You know, I think they're still in cherry pick mode. I don't think it's going to be a situation where, you know, we see eight to ten additions. I, now, look, who you lose has a lot to do with that as well. The problem more so for Alabama where the portal is concerned is that it impacts their depth and their ability that they have leaned on so heavily in this great run, which is entailed player development. I mean, they've done that second to no one. I know the recruiting gets all the attention and rightly so uh, they've been great in that area, but their ability to develop, as you alluded to, not just at the quarterback position, but really across the board, has been the secret sauce, really, in a lot of ways for Nick Saban. So, you know, they've been hit from that perspective already, um, maybe more so where depth is concerned. But for the most part, they're going to be looking for frontline guys, the Jameer Gibbs, the Jamison Williams uh, types, Jermaine Burton, uh, Tyler Steen was an every-game starter for him at left tackle this year. So I think it's going to be more along those lines than just sort of this mass overhaul of the roster is – is as long as they don't have to do it, you know, if they're able to retain a good bit of their roster that they anticipate coming back, I don't see them uh, sort of going that route. And they certainly have all the resources to retain the guys they want. All right. Thank you, Travis Ryer, for joining us. Appreciate your time as always. And for all your Crimson Tide updates, remember to keep it locked on Bama Online. Let's go back over to Emily in Studio A. Hey guys, a great conversation there with Travis about the status of Alabama right now. And we've mentioned all the great quarterbacks that are already available in the portal, but this is Bama. This is Nick Saban. If there is a guy out there that they're interested in that might not be in the portal right now, can they work some magic through some back channels and say, hey, come to Bama? Absolutely, it can be worked out. You got, I mean, you just have guys and fillers and trainers and high school coaches. If you want to let somebody know, that you winking at them and the jump in the portal and you got opportunity for them. Those conversations are easy to have, not just for Bama, but for any school. We know Nick Saban loves to talk about Alabama. We saw him very active yesterday and throughout the weekend, just pleading his case to the college football playoff, but they just on the outside looking in, you heard him talk about it. Number five there, Travis Ryer was asked, will Alabama go after a quarterback? Carl, should they? Well, it, it depends on if they believe in Ty Simpson. I think that mm -hmm. Ty Simpson has to be um, the focal point of what you looked at. The backup quarterback, I, I can't call his name right now, that played when Bryce Young went out, he already showed some struggles. Don't know if he's the guy going forward. So if you believe in Ty Simpson, then maybe not. But can you pass up on a Devin Leary? Can you pass up on another guy that we haven't talked a lot about today with these quarterbacks, Hudson Card? has shown that he has some value. Can you pass up on a talented guy like Hudson Card? Nick Saban is the best at evaluating in the business. And so he'll make that determination. But I think if he loves Ty Simpson and thinks that he can take them back to the promised land, they probably don't. But if he doesn't, you know, you have a lot of options out there. I mean, a prolific passer in high school, definitely a lot of excitement surrounding Ty Simpson. Carl, is the Nick Saban era in the dynasty? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> I almost got to there for a second. Mm. But in reality, though, I mean, we're, we're talking about Alabama, and we're putting up a little bulletin at the bottom of the screen that says mini exodus. Take the pulse. What's going on at Alabama right now? The era has changed. What's going on at Bama is what's going on all over the country. Coach Saban over the years has been able to recruit, out-recruit people, 
out evaluate people, out develop people, and stockpile talent and get guys to stay until it was their turn to play. And it was an assembly line to the NFL. At one time, they had Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, TJ Yeld, and they had like five pro running backs. And but well, that does that situation just doesn't exist anymore. If you're not playing now you're going to leave. The guys are going to transfer out. And so that's just the name of the game today. I don't think it's anything specific to Alabama. I also think the COVID year probably hurt Coach Saban more than any other coach in the country because of how extensive his evaluation process is and the, the way he had recruits dialed in to come to Alabama to work out in front of him before he let you know whether or not you could play at the University of Alabama. When the COVID year happened, they made, they made some misses in recruiting mm -hmm. because their process was not able to be as thorough because guys were not allowed to come on campus. Yeah, the game has changed. And when you look at Alabama and Clemson, two teams that were mainstays in the playoff out this year, is this an example of the transfer portal and NIL leveling the playing field a little bit in yes, college football? Absolutely, it levels the playing field. And it's making guys like Coach Saban and like Coach Sweeney maybe have to do some things that they're uncomfortable doing. Mm -hmm. Coach Sweeney is a guy who hasn't liked the transfer portal. Now he's going to have to use that. You know, Coach Saban is a guy who wants to develop you, who wants to coach you and take you through a program and not able to do that. One thing I do know about guys who win consistently, though, the way that they do, they will adjust to the way things are and they'll find a way. Oh yeah, you see Nick Saban adjusting in his coaching style too. You, you mentioned to Derrick Henry and all the great running backs mm -hmm. that they've had. They've now moved into airing the ball out and having these great quarterbacks that come through. So you assume that, that he will adjust, but all day we've been talking about the chaos of the transfer portal and how it needs to be fixed in the wild, wild west. So is this a positive to all of it? Is that it's giving other schools a shot to compete with Alabama? Absolutely. It's created the parity that people were looking for. You, TCU, are they in the playoffs without the transfer portal, without some of the guys that they were able to get and secure through, the, through that portal? Where, was Tennessee gets Hendon Hooker at the quarterback position? And look at the run that they have this year. It definitely levels the playing field and it gives schools an advantage in, in being able to compete. And also it hurts the depth of programs like Alabama and Clemson. And since it hurts their depth, that also helps other teams be able to compete with them. Certainly depth, very important in college football. <laughs>